podcast, where we bring good business to light. If you are sitting in the room I recorded this podcast in, you and your dog are in a bad way. In today's podcast, I had the rare ability to interview a mentor and friend, Brandon Fouché. Brandon says amazing things that'll stop you in your tracks and does amazing things that make you think he must be part dog. Brandon's specialty is aggression, which involves diagnosing the difference between the human's story and the dog's reality. Today, Brandon will share his experiences from 30 years working with and getting results with the worst cases I have ever seen. Brandon's phone rings all day long. This day in particular, we were filming videos all day, which will be coming out in 2017. And he forgot to turn his ringer off when we started recording again. I apologize in advance at the very end when he gets a few text messages from a client. I didn't want to cut one word out because when he gets on a roll, he just rolls. With all that said, let's meet Brandon. So first off, thank you so much today for coming, Brandon. It's great to see you as always. Oh, it's a pleasure. So one of the things I really like to, to, to go over on this podcast is to give people that are starting businesses the, the, the access to the best professionals and mm -hmm. the best information. Okay. So one of the things I wanted to talk with you about is the intake process. It's one of the things I always love about your business, um, the way I hear you talk with the people mm -hmm. and then do your evaluation with the dog. So you get a call from a client. What kind of things would you be asking the client about getting to know their situation and the dog? There's the basic things, breed, age, whether the dog's neutered or not neutered. Mm -hmm. what, what other things would you ask to get the people talking a little bit more so that you could mm -hmm. actually get the information that you're looking for? Well, actually, Gary, that's, that's the easiest part of it all. Because you're asking people uh, to do exactly what you said in the opening, is to tell the story. So you say, tell the story. All right? And most people are very good at telling stories about their dogs. And in the story, you find the passion within the individual, the whole reason for actually having the dog, wanting the dog in the first place, or how passionate they are about what the dog is doing that's making their life hell. So the key here is to get the emotional response from the human being to tell the story the way it really is, and they will tell you their insecurities as well as their strengths. But the insecurity will come out stronger. I have this thing where I always look for the aggression. I think that to know a dog, you have to know them from the aggression. To know people, we have to know them from their aggression, uh, the problems that they've had in life. And so what you're asking for is for them to sit on the couch if you're on the phone, and tell you their story and how they would like their life to be based on how it is now. So that's the easiest part. And all you have to do is be a good observer. Observing can be watching. Observing can be looking. But if you're good at being both of those things, then you're going to know where the loopholes are because that's all you gotta focus on. You know, it's, it's interesting that most people can easily tell you what you're doing wrong, but they can't fix their problems. So it makes this job really easy because you can listen to what they're doing wrong and have an opinion about it, you see? So that's the easy part. Wonderful. So are there any like buzzwords or anything that you hear a lot in your world when people call like aggression or leash reactivity or uh, the you know these things that people label their dogs constantly that would cause you like maybe a red flag to go off to say oh wait maybe I'll you know I need to come visit you in person or could you tell me a little bit more about that well the red flags to me are what they're not telling you it's what they're hiding so when you hear someone say I got a he's a really good dog in my mind I'm thinking why are you calling me? So we know that's the opposite. Just like this little game. Whatever they say to make it sound wonderful, we know that's where the problem is. So it's the opposite. And so when you finish, you flip everything over, and then you know how to proceed. Gotcha. <laughs>
So if someone says, my dog is attacking people when they come into my house. And then right after they say, he's a really good dog. He knows how to sit. He knows how to do this. He knows how to do that. Then that tells me right there that they're focusing on training. And they're not focusing on the behavior. See, training, training is uh, like a landscape garden. You've heard me say that. Everything's cut out beautifully, you know. And what I'm talking about is like a rainforest. It's looking at the problem and everything. And when you look at it, you, it is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Everything is perfect, right? So then you say, well, what is the thing that it's unbalanced in this equation here? It's the person. You said it in the beginning. The dog tell the reality. What they're doing is what they feel, right? What the hormone tells them to. Usually the person is responding to the actions of the dog, which sends the message to the dog that the dog is in charge because the response is not to tell the dog what they're doing wrong. The response is to follow the dog, which means to actually embolden him and reward him for his assertiveness. And so he's lead down the path going to the left when he should be going to the right. So if you walked into a client's home as a dog walker and you start to, like you're saying, pick apart the pieces that they're hiding, mm -hmm. are you watching the dog a lot also? Are you looking at how the dog is in the environment, in the home, with you? Mm -hmm. How are you splitting up your time? Because one of the, the things that with dog walking is which is different than what you're doing every day, is you don't have to educate the human how to get their dog to act better. You just have to look at the dog and say, okay, I understand the best way that I need to interact with you. Mm -hmm. So how are you assessing the dog? Would you take them out for a walk yourself or would you want to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with just them or just the humans? How would, you, how would you go about that initial meeting? Well, the thing is I've been doing this for so long. The initial conversation is going to tell me everything I need. And so when I actually go to the house, I'm just verifying everything that I've already learned over the phone. So it's a done deal when you walk in the door. Now the only thing that you have to focus on is the uh, cooperation between the owner and the dog and how they physically respond to each other. You know, how many times do they touch the dog? Do they give him a treat? You know, how many times are they saying good boy or good girl or trying to assure the dog that this is going to be something wonderful to, for them? Or Gary is finally here and you're going to have a nice walk and he's going to take you. Do you understand? Yep. That's what I'm looking at. Because what I'm going to be doing on the walk is going to be something totally different than what that person has been doing in the house. So when we come back, what we'll have to do is we'll have to make the dog smarter than the individual. Then you tell the person, hey, this is what you need to do with the dog. But now that the dog has responded to you, you ask that person to do exactly what you've done. The dog already has some history on what to do. And so the person says, wow, he knows how to do that. But they think it's magic. But it's really that the dog is following the leader with you. And then your owner, when the owner appears on the scene, they're also following the leader. So everybody's going in the same direction. And the dog feels like this is the way it's supposed to be. But the moment that you let the owner take control over what you're doing and do it his way, then the dog says, okay, so we're back to the way we're supposed to be. And can't do that. As a leader, as a, uh, a mentor to that person, you have to take the lead. You see? So it's more about being a certain way than what we really do. You know? So if you walk in and you see the dog has a certain type of relationship with the owner, maybe they're not listening, they're acting like most dogs do mm -hmm. they're trying to figure out the human the, you know like you say the humans trying to get the dog yeah the, the dog is always telling the truth yeah they've already got it figured out when you come to a person's home and a dog is taking control it already figured it out now do you think that your job would be harder or easier or does it really matter as much if the owner's not there so you walk in the first day and nobody's there but just you and the dog oh you can't do that you have to be introduced when the owner's there Okay. I mean, it's not saying that you can't, but you never know what kind of dog you're dealing with. So you have to be introduced with the person and the dog, and you have to leave while the person is there Okay. with the dog. You see? Yeah, why do you feel like that's so important? 
Well, because uh, anyone coming into occupied territory is subject to a threat. Okay? And dogs, most dogs are territorial. So you just don't want to walk into a person's home without them being there unless you've come one or two times, especially if the dog has any problems. If the dog doesn't have any problems, no, no problem. Yeah. Do you think it would be easier or harder to get the dog to behave knowing? So, so what, I, what I really want to get across is because the owner's having problems, does that mean you as the dog walker are going to have problems? No. It should be the opposite way. Okay. Because you have an agenda. And dogs want to get it right. That's why they look you in the eye. So if you lay down the agenda, the leadership is what I'm saying, then the dog will follow you. You may have some resistance because some dogs are stubborn, but they'll generally follow you. And then when they go home, they'll follow the owner. Interesting. Yeah. So you so you're doing the work. And and that's one of the things I think a lot of dog walkers struggle with is they do all this hard work to get the dog to behave and be wonderful and then the owners just go back to doing what they want to do. Yeah, I mean, this is a very interesting topic because most problems that people have with their dog, if it revolves around the walk and they have dog walkers, it's simply because that person is coming there to do exactly what you asked them to do, just to walk your dog and not to solve problems. A lot of times people don't know what they want. They think if I could just get my dog out and exercise them, then somehow miraculously this uh, information from up above is just going to seep into the dog because he's physically tired that uh, his brain opens up and he can receive this information. It doesn't work like that. That's not what we're doing. This is not some divine intervention or something. This is about you being able to express to the owners what you do and find out what they really want, you know? Again, we just can't get away from socialization and communication. We have to communicate, Yeah, you know? And that's why a lot of owners are hiring dog walkers anyway. They want to get their dog out and right. interacting with people. Well, yeah, I've given you some dog walkers that contact me now, and uh, they're taking this thing to the next level because they're actually trying to solve some problems that the dogs may have, which is something that they need if they're going to be in the dog business. The stuff that I'm talking about is dog business 101, you know, and the whole concept of the training and things that have been in place before I started talking was actually too advanced for dogs. Training is very advanced for dogs because we're asking the dog to understand what we want from it, you see? Socialization is so easy because we just have to think like a dog. So a lot of times I'll tell people to stop training and start socializing, you know? Stop trying to do something and start trying to be something. And what is the thing I want you to be? I want you to be like a dog. Not to get on all fours, but to think like one. Which requires that we stop thinking like a human being which means that we must let go of our ego, okay, in order to even understand someone else's language. Just think about it. You're trying to speak another language. You have to humble yourself to that language, right? And then after you learn the language, then the human side comes back in and the, uh, <clears throat> the ego steps in and it wants to want more than it wants to have. Okay, and that's where we're getting in trouble again. So we have to, um, you can't get away from your ego, but we have to understand the fact that we have one is enough to control it, you know? So we have to humble ourselves. So that means if you do a 15 dog pack walk every day and you have an ornery dog, to humble yourself means not to just throw them in the group. And, you know, kind of what I see sometimes is people force it. You know, they, they want to grab the new dog and put them in because mm. it makes it easy instead of knowing that they might have to spend a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time getting that dog. Yeah. I often say, you may hear me say on my videos, that here is a dog that is a really great dog for someone who's thinking about doing rehabilitation. Now, I don't mean a great dog in terms of he does everything right. It's a great dog that shows the reality of how things really are, you know? We always try to get away from the aggression or from 
the dominance that the dog has, and we want them to do away with it, and we want them to be nice and sweet and, you know, wonderful. How can you learn if you don't have something that pushes you to the next level? You know, we, we start working with dogs, and we get this balance, all right? And we say, I got it. I know dogs. And we get this new dog is a problem for us and we say well a couple of things he's a bad dog or he can't be helped you can't look at it that way you got to say this is the dog that I need in order to go to the next level that's how you get good you know you got to welcome that dog that's going to challenge you so that you can become something better there's an old saying, uh, I don't know who said it, but uh, you don't get the dogs you want, you get the dogs you need. And why are you having the problem that you're having right now with a dog is because that's the problem that you need right now for you to go to the next level. That's how this thing works, you know? So when I see a dog that challenges me, I have to raise my level of, of understanding, you know? Because if I don't expect for something like this to happen, or if I don't want it to happen, then I'm saying I don't want to grow. And you'll get what you want. <laughs> you don't want to grow. Yeah, you'll you will, get it. Yeah. Because you you won't take that dog. You will not take the dog that will allow you to grow. You will continue to get the dogs and work with the dogs where you don't have to grow. You'll see that a lot in uh, daycare places. They don't want dogs with problems. They don't want to help the dog. They want their job to be easy. You see? So any dog that doesn't conform to the new spray bottle or whatever is a dog that we don't want to deal with. He's too intelligent. He's too smart. He's already figured us out. He's bad. He's bad influence. <laughs> you see? And... I don't know anything in life that doesn't challenge you. And if you step up to the challenge, that you don't grow. I don't know anything in life like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. That was a lot of good information. No. Um, the best way to get in touch with you is brandonfouché.com. Yeah, brandon at brandonfouché.com. Or check me out on Facebook, Fouché Way. Or even just give me a call. 323-228-4175. Wonderful. And you have a great YouTube channel with lots of information for anybody that's looking to take their dog's uh, information to the next level. Yeah, so absolutely. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me, Gary.